Welcome to St George's Westcombe Park for our worship this Sunday. My name is Julie and I'm a licensed lay minister or reader here. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. This period leading up to Holy Week and Easter was traditionally a time of preparation for baptism on Easter Day. Nowadays, many people use it as a time to reflect on their lives and their relationship with God. You may have decided to give up something or take up something new. I recommend the Lent group starting next week. You may be making a lifestyle change to reduce your impact on the environment or speaking out for those people unable to do so themselves. I hope that whatever you have decided to do this Lent helps to make you ready for the events we remember in Holy Week and on Easter Day. Taking part in today's service are members of the East Greenwich Ministry Team and people from our congregation, including the choir, who will lead some of our singing. Instead of our usual St George's and Me slot, during Lent we will be hearing what Lent means to different members of our church family. Today's reading from Mark's Gospel tells us of the beginning of Christ's earthly ministry, his baptism and his time in the desert being tempted by Satan, and John will be speaking about this later in the service. All the words you need to join in will be on the screen. So as we come together to worship God this morning, from places near and far, let us greet one another. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our opening hymn this morning is My Jesus, My Saviour, a song of praise to Jesus, who, as the words remind us, is our comfort, our strength, and our refuge, everywhere and always. <laughs> Good morning. My name's Reverend Margaret and I'm the team rector in the parish of East Greenwich. We come to the moment in the service where we pause, reflect and say sorry to God for the mistakes that we've made, for the things that come between us and him. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Heavenly Father, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of St Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. He was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Good morning. It's good to be with you again at St George's Church online. I hope you're enjoying the somewhat milder temperatures this week after the freezing weather we had recently. I felt rather sorry for the men and women volunteers standing around for hours outside the vaccination centre I visited as the wind chill factor brought down the thermometer to about minus 8 degrees C. When we're chilled to the bone it feels like we are being tested on what we can endure, even if it is our own decision to go out. Today's Gospel speaks about testing and endurance in the well-known account of Jesus in the wilderness after his baptism by John. So Mark tells us that Jesus goes into the wilderness and is tempted, or better, tested, by Satan. Here's a picture of the wilderness of Judea. I took it when I was there in November 2019. You can see how testing it might be to try and survive in this place. I was there for about half an hour, so what it would be like for 40 days and nights I cannot imagine. Obviously we don't know exactly how it looked in the first century, but it would definitely be cold at night, hot in the daytime, plus Jesus was fasting. We are now in Lent and I'm relieved to say we don't have to fast for 40 days or even once a week, or at all if you don't want to. But as you know, it can be good to give up a regular tempting food or more positively take up a spiritual discipline or specific good works. For Jesus we get the sense that he is preparing for his three-year ministry. The text suggests that he is consciously taking over from John the Baptist, baptising and proclaiming the good news of God. So often Christians proclaim the bad news of God, believe or you're going to hell. Instead, the good news that should be proclaimed is about God's justice, his salvation and his love for humanity. In the wilderness, perhaps Jesus came to an understanding of who he was 
what he could do and his relationship with his father. Currently we are also in a kind of wilderness enduring the difficult times of the pandemic and being tested to the limits of our mental and physical health by being restricted or stuck indoors for so long. Personally, as a big introvert, it's manageable for me, but as we know, many are finding it very difficult, especially in terms of work, finances, looking after and teaching children, not to mention bereavement and illness. The testing of Jesus lasted 40 days. In Jewish thought, 40 signifies a longish time. But as, as I said a minute ago, it led to the start of his ministry and helped him understand who he was, what he could do and his relationship with God. For us, the likely two years or more of a Covid wilderness can also be the start of something like that. In the lockdowns in particular, we find out who we are, what we really need and what we value. Our past preoccupation with busyness is stripped away. We may decide that we need to change direction, which is an underlying meaning of the word repent. But even so, God is with us in our homes. Secondly, like Jesus exploring his ministry, we find out what we can do for others. The surge of medical and scientific endeavour, NHS care, local community support and volunteering has been a wonderful thing to behold. I know there are problems with some selfishness and ignorance, but even so, this communal and worldwide response can restore our faith in humanity and may even inspire us to do more for others. Thirdly, like Jesus, we can develop our relationship with God, especially now as we come to Lent. Hopefully we might more deeply contemplate the meaning of life and the problem of life's sufferings and trials. Lastly, as a world community, emerging from this Covid wilderness, Perhaps we can move on to better global preparedness for future pandemics and also enter into a time of international collaboration to defeat the problem in the background that hasn't gone away. I mean, of course, climate change. And as one of the wealthier nations, we can work globally for more equity of health care and the benefits of science. So I hope and pray that you have a meaningful time of Lent, sharing with Jesus the wilderness in which we find ourselves. But like him, looking forward to our own personal ministry, whatever that is, but given to us by God. Jesus said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. In response to all that we've heard, we affirm our faith in God. We say together, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, 
I guess first off, I should talk about what I'm going to do to market this year. And the answer to that is nothing. It's been a hard enough year without putting extra pressure onto myself now. But I have been giving some thought as to what Lent actually means to me. For so many years, even when I wasn't going to church, I'd always do something in the six weeks, give something up like most people do. And like most people, I would give up chocolate or wine or something else that would help me lose weight. It's funny how many people say they're doing something for Lent, but it's always something to help take that extra layer of winter blubber off. And like anyone else, I do it without giving a second thought as to why I was doing it. Then, maybe six, five or six years ago, I started to properly question what the purpose of Lent was and why giving something up was supposed to make me a better Christian. Around that time, I came across the idea of taking something up for Lent, which seems to me to be a much better idea do something extra in Lent, make a difference to someone or something else rather than use it as an excuse to lose weight. 
I still didn't really get Lent though. And asked a vicar who had given up wine and meat for the six weeks, no Sundays off, why he was doing it. He understood my very basic theological knowledge and gave me a very basic answer saying, giving up what I love in this period shows God I love him more. But that simple answer actually got me thinking about it even more. If I gave up wine for six weeks, I wouldn't be thinking about God. It would be wine that was on my mind constantly. And that said vicar kind of demonstrated the point by talking about meat and wine far more than God during the six weeks. And if we think that God loves us as a child, is this how a child shows love to a parent? Do I want Toby to deprive himself in order to show his love for me? Frankly, I'd be much happier if he died in his room or kept quiet when he comes home at one o'clock in the morning. So if I don't want my child to deprive himself to show his love for me, why would that be how I would show my love to God? I get that in the Bible, fasting is a recognised way of showing devotion to God. But the Bible also says marriage is only between a man and a woman, and I certainly don't agree with that. So if I can ignore one part, why not another? The Bible was set down in stone thousands of years ago. We're intelligent beings. We can take the message without blindly following every rule. I can see no purpose at all in depriving myself of something in order to show my love for God. Instead, in the same way that I want Toby to generally be nice, but to maybe make a bit of extra effort on my birthday, say, I try to do the right thing all the time, but I'm happy to make a bit of extra effort to do something extra for Lent, like replacing the light bulbs with any energy efficient ones or donating extra to charity. But if I don't manage it, that's absolutely fine by me too. So to sum up, really, I guess I'm saying that I don't think Lent is important. I certainly don't ever plan to give anything up again. I think how you behave all year round is what really matters. But I am interested to hear what others say. So if you'd like to give us your thoughts, please do let us know and we'll get you in the service one Sunday morning. Thank you and goodbye. Our prayers today are inspired by our gospel reading of the waters of love, the spirit of the dove and the test of the desert. So in the power of the spirit and as members of Christ's great union, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The waters of love, we pray for St George's, for Holy Trinity, for Christ Church, that our inclusive church and our Zoom coffees, our worship online, our music, our marches, our wildflowers may continue to inspire the waters of love and of worship and of community in our corner of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Spirit of the Dove. We pray for communities and parishes across London and across the world and the health professionals that serve us today and in days gone, motivated by a care for and a patience of the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for a fundamental reform as we emerge from the pandemic in the economy and society of our country, so that the principles of inclusion, respect and equality that we hold up may be reflected in the systems that we adopt for the ordering of society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the test of the desert, comfort and heal those who suffer. Those whose names are listed in our notices today and those whose names are known only to some. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And cherish those who have died and those who have felt the pain of their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The waters of love, the spirit of the dove, the test of the desert. We thank you, merciful Father, for these gifts and ask you humbly to accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. We draw our prayers to a close as we say together the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. final blessing. Christ give you the grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, good morning. I hope you enjoyed the online service this morning. I've got your notices. Uh, we have a new event called Conferu Catch Up. This is um, aimed especially at uh, people who don't have uh, access to the internet. It's a 
a telephone call and it will happen twice a month on the second and fourth Sunday of each month at 11 a.m. Uh, it's a social opportunity um, to catch up with friends by phone. You dial into the Conferu number, which I've put on the screen here, tap in the pin, and you will join other members of the congregation um, in, in, in just for a social chat. Um, if you can't take down the number from the screen, don't worry, because it's also printed on the... Uh, postcard that we sent you all so hopefully you've still still got that and you can access the, the number that way don't forget our lent courses start this week we're running two sessions um two identical sessions the first one on wednesday afternoons at 1 30 that will start this wednesday the 24th and that's led by julie the second on thursdays at 7 30 in the evening starting the 25th of February, and that will be led by Barbara. So do join that. It sounds very interesting. It's um, Changing Lives, uh, Scripture from the Margin, and is based on readings from Acts. I mentioned last week that we're revised, going to start revising the electoral roll. So do look out. Um, there's a couple of you still haven't responded to an email from you from... Uh, from me rather, uh, inviting you to fill out the form, form to join the roll. If you're not on the roll and want to be and haven't received an email from me, we're going to put the form up on the website at some point this later this week. So do look out for that. And finally, as soon as these notices are finished, don't forget to join us on for our Zoom coffee. All the um, links that I've mentioned uh, here are in the newsletter, uh, so you can join via the newsletter. Um, well, that's it for this week. Enjoy your Zoom coffee, and I'll see you next week. Yeah.